one of the first videos that was uploaded to this particular channel was a time lapse of me creating this particular animation. However, there were no screencast keys and it was hard to follow along. And that's why today we're creating a step by step tutorial on how you can create this infinite zoom recursion as well. So let's start right off. We'll take our default cube and we'll give it a modifier, a bevel modifier, and change the amount to 0.15 and the number of segments to 5. After that, we'll go to Object, Shade Smooth. Now we're going to hit Alt D to create a linked duplicate and then hit X so that it moves on the X axis. Make sure you press Ctrl and just move it so that it moves by two units away from the previous cube. So now you can take the cube once again and then Alt D, X and just move it by two units. Now select all three of the cubes, Alt D, Y and just move it two units, Alt D, Y, move it two units. And now you can switch on transparency, delete the default light, press one, then B for box select and just select everything. And then Alt D, Z, move it up, Alt D, Z, move it down. So now you have a grid of 27 cubes. This is going to be our middle sized cube and we need one size that's larger than this and one that's smaller than this. So we're going to go back to one, B, select everything. And now we're going to scale this up. So we're just going to scale it such that each cube becomes the size of all three of these cubes. First Alt D and then scale by hitting S and make sure you press Ctrl and just scale it up till it matches. So you can see we have to scale it by five units. Note that number because we'll be requiring it later on. And now we can take all of these and just grab it on the Y and just move it back till the already existing cubes match up with the edge most cube of the larger box. So now that you have that done, we can go ahead and create a smaller version as well. So let's again, Alt D scale and just scale it down by the reciprocal of five, which is 0 0.2 and then scale it down by that much again. So scale 0 0.2. So now it's going to be the size of one of the boxes of the middle sized cubes. So let's grab it on the Y and just move it till it matches up right there. Now we don't require this cube and we don't require this cube as well. Now we're going to be taking our camera and animating it such that we get the looping animation. So let's just press Alt G to clear the location and Alt R to clear the rotation. And then we can rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees and then just grab it on the Y axis and move it back by a few units. Now we're going to be parenting this camera to an empty and making all the scaling and rotations on the empty. So let's add in the empty as well. So shift A, empty, plane axis, and just scale it up so that we can actually see the empty. Now let's take our camera, shift select the empty, and then control P, set parent to object. And then let's just select our empty. Now when we go to zero, we should be able to see what we have in our scene. But before we make any animations, let's set all of our defaults. So let's go to our camera, change the focal length to 25 so that a lot more can be seen. Also go to viewport display and change passport out all the way to one. Then let's go to our render properties, switch on bloom, switch on screen space reflections, go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 20 to 30 frames per second, change the end frame to 300, change the output to the folder in which we save it by double slash, change the file format to FFmpeg video, encoding, change it to MPEG4, the output quality to perceptually lossless. Now we can actually take our camera and just grab it on the Y axis till we see the cube that's right in front of us perfectly matches up with the cube behind it. So if you actually have the x-ray switched on still, you should be able to see the cubes inside. If at all this seems too light to you, you could switch to the wireframe view so that you can definitely see through. So just make sure that you grab your camera and make sure you always press control so that it moves by equal increments and just move it till the sizes perfectly match up. So it perfectly matches up over here for me, but I feel like it's easier for me to tell if I have just x-ray on GY and just move it about. So you can clearly see it's too small, too small, just right. And it's larger again. So that's the size that you want. If you don't get it to this size, it becomes harder to match up later on. Now let's go ahead and select our empty and just increase the timeline a bit. Go to frame number zero and hit I on the rotation and the scale. Now, once you go to frame 300, rotate it on the Z by 180 degrees and then scale it down. Make sure you press control and just scale it till you get that situation that the cube in front of you is perfectly the size of the previous cube. And you'll see that that happens at exactly 0.6. So we're gonna scale that 0.6 and hit I, rotation and scale. So now when you actually play the animation, you should get a perfectly looping animation. So you can actually switch off overlays and switch off x-ray mode to make sure that it's happening. But right now there's two issues that's happening. 
one is that while we're actually going through this area, you see we chop through the queue. That's something that we don't want. And also, it doesn't seem to be perfectly looping because it slows down and it starts like that as well. So we could exaggerate that effect to make it seem like a smoother loop. And in the process, we'd also be removing this particular overlap that we're getting. So in order to do that, we're going to change from the timeline to the graph editor. And we're just going to increase the size for now. And in the graph editor, we're going to go ahead and just make sure that all the other keyframes are not visible except for the Z rotation. So now that once you have the Z rotation, we can just go ahead and scale these up. And by scaling them up, the animation would become faster. So let's select the first one and just scale it by five or two. And then let's select the last frame and just scale that by two as well. Once you've scaled it, you can just scrub through and see that we do not clip through anymore. And that should be fine for our animation. And it also becomes a lot smoother. So the animation seems to be looping far better with this particular setup. So now what we can do is we can go back to our timeline over here and just bring this down and start off with the shading. So let's go to the rendered viewport and then click and drag from here to open a new window, change it to the shader editor and hit N to remove the side panel. Now let's go ahead and deal with the lights. We need at least one point light, which we're going to parent to the camera. So we're going to hit shift A, light, point, and just grab it on the Y axis and just make sure that it is with the camera and then shift click the camera, control P, set parent to object. Now let's go to the light and just play around with its properties as well. So this time we're gonna go ahead and make this animation with a lime green color and we're gonna change the power to something like 1000. So remember that the fall off for light follows the inverse squared law. So since we were decreasing everything by 0.2, or we were multiplying everything by 0.2 to make the smaller versions, we'd have to actually decrease the power by 0.2 into 0.2 or 0.2 squared, which would be 0.04. So when we actually go to our first frame and keyframe this, we have to go to the last frame and change the power all the way down to 1000 into 0.04, which is 40, and then keyframe it. So once you have that, you should be able to see the loop happen almost perfectly. So we can go to our timeline and just hit the up and down arrows to see the difference. And now the difference you can see is that because the size also changes, the shadows can actually be seen here. But when you go to the first frame, the shadow is much sharper because it's larger. So what you have to do is just go ahead and deselect shadow. So that way shadows won't be seen and it'll be much more of a seamless animation. So you can check that by hitting the up and down arrows, making sure that it's almost the same. Slight differences will be fine for now. Now let's go to the world properties and just change the background color all the way to black. Now we actually deal with the texturing of the cubes. Of course, you could just leave it as is, but based on what I did in the previous one, I went ahead and selected the cubes, got rid of the principal PSDF, searched for a glossy shader and an emission shader, and then mix them together with the mix shader by placing the glossy up on top and the emission at the bottom and changing the roughness of the glossy and connecting the shader into the surface. And first we'll play around with the glossy. So we just decrease the factor so that it's completely glossy. And we can just go ahead and decrease the roughness. So something like 0.4 is fine for this. And we can change the color and just drop it down by a little bit. So this grayish color seems to be fine. Another quick thing that I forgot to mention while I was recording this is that with the mix shader, we actually need the factor to control the emission and we want only the edges to actually become emission. So we added in the emission nodes in the mix shader, but we never got to it. So let's search for a layer weight node and then place the facing of the layer weight node into a color ramp. And then we can go ahead and change the blend to something slightly smaller, like 0.4. And we can also go ahead and just decrease the color ramp in like that and place the color into the factor of the mix shader. So now you can actually see how it's going to affect our mesh. So right now everything is lighting up. We can just reduce this such that only the edges actually light up. So the color of the emission, we're going to change to the same blue that we have, and we're going to increase the strength to something like 100. We can always just reduce this as well and just play around with the blend to get whatever you feel is right. Just make sure that you play through the animation once such that not any area of the animation becomes far too bright. If that's the situation, you can go ahead and change the values accordingly. But right now, I think this works perfectly fine for me, and this is what the final render is going to be. Also note that later 
later on I did change the colors to the blue again. So the rest of the tutorial is going to happen with the green, but note that I made those changes. Now back to the original tutorial. Also to get some nice reflections, since we are switching on to screen space reflections, I went ahead and added a torus and you can change the properties of the torus here. So I would change the minor radius to something a bit smaller. So let's go for 0.175 and then just rotate it on the Y axis by 90 and then G X and just move it out there. Now Alt D X move it out there. Select both of these Alt D R Y 90 degrees Alt D R X 90 degrees. That way you'd have one torus for each side. Now each of these tori are too jagged. So you can hit Control 2 to add in a subdivision surface of level 2. You can do that for all of them. So just select all of them and hit Control 2. And then just select all of these. And remember, there's one smaller set and one larger set. So let's Alt D S 0.2 and then just G Y. Make sure you press Control and just put it around the smallest set. And then again, Alt D S 5 and then S 5. Or you could have just scaled it by 25. G Y Control and just move it till it is around the center of the largest ones. Once you have that set, we can give it its material. So select one, go to materials, hit new, remove the principal BSDF, shift A, emission, and then just plug that into the surface. Now we're gonna change the color of the emission to that nice lemon green, but we're not gonna saturate it fully. We're gonna keep it slightly desaturated and just increase the strength to something like 20. And since the bloom is a bit too harsh, we're gonna go back to our bloom settings and just clamp it at four and also decrease the intensity to 0 0.02. So now when we actually switch off the overlays and watch the animation, this is what the animation currently looks like. So that is how you get your animation. In case you feel like there's something different between the first and last frames, you have to sit and troubleshoot it to figure out exactly what it is. And in this case, I feel like the torus toruses are not placed properly. So I'm going to switch up my overlays back on and just take these toruses, go to seven, and you can see that they actually are not placed correctly. So I have to select all of the toruses over here, including this one, go back to seven and just G Y there. So now when we actually select our empty again and just jump between the first and last frames, we see that it is exactly the same and hence it's going to be forming a perfectly looping animation. Of course, you don't have to use cubes. You don't have to light it up with toruses. You could go ahead and make various different types of animations using this particular concept. Hopefully the step-by-step -step tutorial was helpful to you and you can use this to create various other animations. But always remember, it takes a little bit of trial and error, which you could see in the time-lapse video of exactly how to get things to work properly and how to make everything loop. So in this particular case, while I was recreating this tutorial, I also realized that my scaling of 0 0.6 to make this perfectly loop happened to be fairly lucky if your camera is not present such that it perfectly matches up. Maybe your camera is moved on the Y by just a little bit more. In that case, you'll realize that 0 0.6 does not actually cause it to perfectly loop, which you should be able to see if you select the empty and just change between keyframes. So in this case, you'd have to scale the empty a little bit more and you'd have to fine tune it because the value is not going to be a perfect whole number like it was that 0 0.6 it's a very round number you will get it such that it perfectly loops but the actual value by which you have to scale is not going to be a nice round number so you'll have to actually play around with it and use the composition guide so you can actually select your camera go down here and switch on composition guides over here so just switch all of these on and just make a few notes as to exactly where things line up and then when you go to like the last frame, you can play around to make sure that the objects actually line up with those grids that you had created or the composition lines. So it is a bit of work, but hopefully you don't have to go through those problems. So I hope you have fun with this one and create various versions. And until next time, I'll be creating a lot more of these. And if you see any of my time lapses and want a step-by-step -step tutorial, definitely let me know and I will create them for you. So until then, stay creative.